Um, Quay, you guys obviously didn't get to play Vanderbilt last year. That game was canceled twice. Um, Kirby was saying, I was asking him to recall it, and he was saying he, he doesn't know if it was so much anger as it was frustration at the game getting called off and not being able to play that week. What, what do you remember about that? Uh, I just remember um, preparing uh, all week, leaning up on until that, um, that Saturday. We were just ready to play, to be honest with you. Uh, it was an SEC game. We were just ready to play. That's, I didn't know at the moment that it was canceled. Uh, we was pretty much upset uh, that it happened. But, you know, it was a lot that was going on with COVID and how serious it was and how serious it is now. But at that moment, we understood. But we just wanted to play football at the end of the day. But uh, people, people's health was way more, you know, important than us going to go play football. So... That's the only thing I quite remember. Go <clears> to <throat> Chip Towers and then Mark Weiser. Well, you probably have the best vantage point of all of sort of assessing the play of Jordan Davis and what he does for the entire defense. But uh, can, can you expound on that a little bit? And, and how much of a, a, a progression, a lift in his game have you seen from previous years to what you're seeing on the field this year? Uh, <clears throat> the biggest standpoint for me is the way that he chased after the ball. Um, I think everybody saw that play with UAB. Um, that yeah. pretty much surprised me, uh, to be honest with you. I'm on the field with him and seeing him run. Um, that's pretty much something that he doing in practice. So I really wasn't surprised. But to see him move that fast, I think that was the fastest I ever saw him move. So that will be the biggest thing that surprised me, to, to be honest with J.D., the way he moved this year compared to the last year, running after the ball or whatnot. Thank you. Corey, you guys have had a couple of night games already this year, uh, last week in Clemson. Um, what do you think of playing at 11 a.m. Central time? Uh, is, that, is that hard to get up for? Are you a morning guy? Uh, no, not at all when it comes to playing football. At the end of the day, um, <laughs> Georgia. So we're going to get ready, you know, regardless, because you already know Coach Smart and everything. You know, with all our leaders and everything, we're going to have everybody ready. And we're going to be ready to play. Shouldn't be no problem at all. Go to Anthony Dasher and then uh, D. Leggy again. Hey, Quay, good to see you today. Um, I know the entire uh, middle linebacker room is, is close and tight and all that, but I'm just wondering when it comes to you and the Kobe and uh, and Channing. I mean, you guys obviously get most of the playing time and y'all really do your own things. Uh, that, how, how much fun is that? Because uh, uh, y'all really seem like y'all really feed off each other when you guys are on the field. Well, yeah, we do. Um, it's pretty much, it starts with practice with us. Um, it's just, how close we is and um, the tradition that, you know, relies here at the University of Georgia. Um, but not only us being close, it's just our whole room, even with the freshmen, Jamon, with Shmile, uh, John, uh, Ron Davis, Treasure Marshall, it's everybody. Um, we're just close all around, but it definitely feeds off one another, seeing one of us make a play, you know, and it just hypes one of, one of us up, you know what I'm saying, just to see another guy go out there and make a play. And I, be proud and they be proud as well to see one another make a play. So, yeah. Hey, Quay, is there such a thing as a, a, a road field advantage? It seems like when uh, Georgia plays away, sometimes the fans can really make a big difference. And in Nashville in particular, that, that's something that uh, you, you get to look forward to. Uh, I want to say, yeah, because all fans travel. Um, I know I remember last time we played Vandy, I think it was 2019, if I'm not mistaken, the first game of the year. And it pretty much felt like a home game. So uh, we pretty much enjoy that. And, you know, sometimes they do. But the main focus is just to go in and win the game and execute at a high level. Let's go to Jake Rowe and then Mike Griffith. Wait, can, can you recall, Kirby was talking about kind of your early time here, some of the frustrations and, and some of the, you know, I guess, uh, you know, adversity you went through when you first got to Georgia, you know, academically and on the field. Um, can you recall that time and just kind of remember maybe when things kind of started to turn for you, when it all started to click? Uh, can you say a question again for me, please? Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, when, when did things yeah. start to click for you? When, when did things really start to kind of come together for you as a player, as a student at Georgia? When did you kind of maybe hit your stride a little bit? I probably want to say probably my junior year, everything pretty much started clicking, I really, really mature. I, I mature every year, I want to say, being here, but my junior year is really when I hit my highest peak, I want to say, 
Because coming in, as Coach Mark probably already said, it was real, real frustrating for me playing a new position and having the ability that I have and not really understanding, you know, uh, the plays or how I do this or how I should do that. It was just very, very frustrating for me. Um, but yeah, I want to say my junior year was when it, everything hit and pretty much took off for me. Quay, uh, we in the media got to watch practice for the first or part of practice for the first time in, I guess, since 2019. And we, we saw George Pickens out there catching passes and Kirby tells us he's been cleared the last two weeks. Uh, I, I know you're on defense, but anytime we ask anybody about George, they smile and talk about his personality. Does it, does it give the team a lift to see him back out there? And, and what, what does he bring to the chemistry of Georgia? Uh, George is, you know what I'm saying? We, we happy to have George back. Um, since the first day he got back, we happy as well, but not only him, but him, Taki and Donnell as well. Um, all of those guys, we just a you know big family, big brotherhood. So we happy to see everybody back. Everybody, um, just to have everybody out there, to be honest, uh, brings a type of you know excitement to everybody. Uh, it's not just one person, everybody, but George, of course, uh, with his, with his personality, the way he is, is um, pretty much exciting. You know, to have him back. Let's go to Matthew and then Vance. Yeah, Quay, you talk about just how close all the linebackers are in the room. I just want to get from your perspective, what's the relationship between uh, you guys and uh, the line look like, both on and off the field? Uh, us and who? The defensive line. Oh, um, you know, it's got to be a bond there regardless because uh, we got to communicate with them and get them lined up or whatnot in the way that they pretty much set up plays with us by taking on blocks or whatnot. But we're really close. Uh, I want to say – it's just something about this team uh, since I've been here, uh, this overall team, not just us in the D-line, but all the, us are the, are the middle linebackers in the defense, but the entire team, um, since I've been here, it just seemed like this is the closest the team has been since I've been here. My opinion, um, you know, we're just close as a whole team. It's just something special about it, to be honest with you. Hey, Quay, uh, Coach Smart just also pointed out – part of your turning point was you becoming more of a leader. How do you think you've become more of a leader, uh, not only for your unit, but the entire team? Uh, that would be easy, probably being vocal and talking more. Uh, probably when I first got here, I didn't say anything. I was just quiet, uh, just come practice and pretty much head out and going on about my business. And uh, I think Coach Mark pretty much challenged me, not only him, but Coach Schumann as well, challenged me to be more vocal. Um, to be honest, I take more pride for being here, being from Georgia and staying home. I take a lot of pride in putting on this G, you know, and represent for it. So um, that was pretty much it, being more vocal and speaking more, you know, just coming from the heart. Thanks. Okay, Palmer, you go next, please. Wait, what's <clears throat> what's this whole ride been like with Channing Tindall? Um, I, I know the two of y'all came in together and 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 y'all big roles for Georgia. Uh, I heard the first part. I ain't hear the second part. I know you asked what what has it been like this ride with me and Channing? Yeah, or, what's it been like now that both of y'all are playing big roles? Oh, me and Channing talked about. Me and Channing talked about that Saturday, to be honest with you. Um, we just talked about uh, it pretty much been a, you know, a long ride for us. Um, for us being here for four years and, you know what I'm saying, probably really much getting out to our, our high peak and playing, uh, coming in and doing what we wanted to do. Um, probably didn't get to do that as early as we wanted to, but um, we just decided um, for, you know, staying here and just playing our role, whatever it was early on in our couple of years and, we're just pretty much excited. We talked about that, though. Um, to be where we're at now, uh, we're happy for one another. Uh, Jed May, go ahead, please. Yeah, Quay, um, going back to that early part of your career, I think, I think Kirby said there were times where maybe you weren't sure, you know, if you wanted to keep playing, you know, college football. Just take me back to those times. What, you know, what, what were your thoughts like? What, what about this place, the people here that, um, that, that made you want to stick it out and, and keep trying to learn this defensive system and stick with the team? Uh, I started with probably Coach Smart and Coach Schumann pretty much uh, talking to me and just, you know, the, the words and the conversation that I had with them just, you know, brought me more to life and wanted me 
and made me, you know, just see things out um, and just realize that it's going to be things that I'm going to go through with this and that. And, um, but yeah, uh, it was real, real frustrating for me. I was in a dark place uh, when I first, you know, got here or whatnot. And it was real, real frustrating for me. Uh, I was just in the situation, you know, as a freshman, when I got here, the transfer portal was real, real big or whatnot. And all the outside noises and everything like that, it was just pretty much real, real frustrating for me. And um, I ain't gonna go too much in detail, but yeah, that was real, real frustrating for me. It's quick. Let's squeeze in one more with Connor. Hey, Quay, who's the most athletic player in your front seven? And what does it say that you have so many guys who could possibly be that answer? Uh, it's a whole lot of guys. I ain't going to say one person, uh, but all of those guys can do multiple things. I'll just say that. <laughs>